Okay. Um, I'll, I will give you a small presentation. I'll divide my presentation in three sections. One will be a small presentation of the Islamic Council of Norway. Second one will be about extremism and how the third is how we deal with extremism in Norway or in a Scandinavian perspective. Uh, the Islamic Council of Norway was established in 1993. This slide, this slide has uh, become a book. Uh, I give a presentation in a city called Kristiansand in Norway and a woman was uh, listening to this, so she wrote her book. That shows actually the history of uh, the minorities in Norway, only that slide. So I can speak only on this slide for one or two hours. Uh, I will not do that because I've only got 20 minutes. So I usually use a lot of time, but I don't have time for that. That shows actually when the minorities moved, and especially when the Muslims moved to Norway. It was in uh, 70s, end of 60s, start of 70s, the same time as in Denmark and Sweden. And uh, those who came to Norway, they had only one goal. The goal was to work, work and work, and go back to their home country. Uh, but almost none of them has done that. So uh, my father uh, was, he came uh, to Norway in 70s. And uh, now our third generation is growing up. This slide shows actually uh, how the Muslims started from one point and then they got in the different uh, directions. And something happened in mid 80s which made them, or which actually forced them to, to unite themselves in the Islamic Council of Norway, which uh, we did in 1993. Uh, can some of you guess what happened in, the, in, in Europe in mid-80s? Someone wants to guess? No one? Okay. Huh? My question is that uh, it was written a huge debate in Europe uh, uh, which focused a lot on Muslims. Satanic versus, Satanic versus Rashti. So that actually uh, forced Muslims to unite themselves, to have a common platform so they could speak with one tongue. Uh, and because they only had lived in Norway for 10, 15 years, they didn't know the language, they didn't know the codes, how to speak, how to manage to, to, to meet the, the, the society. So uh, then they uh, found out that it was a better idea to unite ourselves and get the best brains from each and every mosque so we could handle uh, the issues which we were facing. Uh, nowadays, in 2016, uh, as you can see on the top, on the right side, uh, it's I've written elders and it's a question mark. Those who came here in 60s and 70s, they're pensionists. So we are talking about them. What's going to happen with them? Because we are also adopting a European family um, um, pattern. Uh, before, uh, we were living together. Now we are in our daily life, I mean, both are working, both uh, man and uh, husband and wife, and uh, uh, we are actually adopting the European, the Scandinavian, the Norwegian family pattern. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, our elders, our parents in future, if not now, they will also be on the, you know, the old houses. So do we have any system for them? Because they will require, they will have some special requirements regarding halal food, prayers, can a female um, you know, give treatment to a male patient. All, I mean, those discussions have uh, taken place in Britain and in, um, and in uh, France, but we in Scandinavia are still one or two generations behind. So that discussion will come, uh, and they will, that discussion will also be a very ugly discussion. Um, Muslim youth, it has been a lot of focus on Muslim youth. What is Muslim youth doing? 
they are getting uh, radicalized, uh, extremists. Uh, what happened? Their parents were not uh, um, in that thoughts. What happened with them? So we are also working on them, and I will come back through my presentation. Women, and there is a question mark on women. Uh, in uh, Scandinavian media, we often hear or read about that uh, women has just disappeared. Women's role is not in mosque. She is not active. But I can tell you, at least in Norway, uh, the majority of the activities uh, run in mosques are run by women. And also in Norwegian, actually. Okay, we have our members in almost all over the Norway. We have three goals. One goal is to build a Norwegian Muslim identity. Because my daughters, they're born and grown up in Norway. So can all of you see, is that okay? okay. So for them, Pakistan is not important. And for me, maybe Pakistan is not that important. Being a religious person, the Muslim identity is uh, important. So for me, it's equally important with the Norwegian identity. Because the language we speak, the best language I speak is Norwegian. I speak English as well, not that good. But I speak three languages from, from Pakistan. And the best language I speak is Norwegian. And my daughters, our children, our coming generations, the language they will have, the framework of their life will be Norwegian, Scandinavian, European. So that's why we are working with this idea as well, to have a Norwegian Muslim identity. And it's easier, actually, to live as a Norwegian Muslim um, or being a Pakistani Muslim in Norway, to be honest. Uh, unity, because we have our members from almost all over the world. And I forgot to tell you that the Islamic Council of Norway is the only council in the world which unites Muslims and gives them equal rights at all levels in one and same uh, organization. It's unique. It's not, I'm not talking about that the scholars are meeting at the top level on coffee or tea. We are talking about that they are organized in a, one organization, Shia and Sunni, all of them in one organization. They have equal rights. So we are, we are, we are quite unique in that sense and we and of course, I mean, that is also, that gives us also much more, you know, it's, it's challenging to keep them in one organization. So unity is also one of our goals. And third is that we are dialogue partner. We work with dialogue because, and, and, and bridge building, because if you read the newspapers, you will read that bridges are burned every day. We can work constructively for one year, two year, and then you will hear from someone, a person whose name is Muhammad or Ali, and he says that I hate Norwegian values. And you know, then the discussion is going in a, speci in a, in a specific direction. Uh, people don't trust. Uh, journalists often ask me or other scholars or other leaders that, oh, you're talking with two tongues. You know, so this discussion is quite familiar in Scandinavia or in West Europe. And uh, so, uh, dialogue, we are dialogue partner. The, uh, the Islamic Council of Norway, we work actually at uh, of, uh, official level uh, with government, uh, with departments, uh, ministries, prime minister, and all the other institutes, official institutes. But we also have a link, of course, with our uh, members. So, and the Islamic Council of Norway is the only organization uh, which represents Muslims. In Denmark, uh, unfortunately, there's a, another case. In, uh, in Sweden, in UK, you have thousands of councils. So we, we have managed to keep ourselves in one organization. This, this is quite unique. Um, how do we work? Uh, we cooperate and have dialogue with different organizations or, I mean, whosoever wants to have dialogue with us, we have dialogue with them. Uh, STL, it's a common platform for, for, for all the religions and lifestyles. So we are members there. 
and we sit and have dialogue about different issues. MKR is for the Norwegian Church. Uh, we started our dialogue with the Norwegian Church back in 1990, 91, and they actually helped us to, to, to build uh, the Islamic Council of Norway. Uh, the structure was there. Uh, they, they helped us with, with, with that. Um, and I will, I will talk a little bit more about, uh, about that because that's interfaith dialogue. Uh, we also have communication and dialogue with the Jewish community. Jewish community in Norway is a very small community. There are only 1,200 Jews in Norway. Uh, and they are often under attack. Because we also are minority, they are minority, so we have many same challenges. Uh, and we have, we have very good dialogue with them. But it's not only tea or, and, 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 and cake meetings, we also di discuss about difficult issues. Uh, and all other, all other uh, organizations, we have, we have dialogue with them. Uh, many of you ask me, why do you go with this red button? We are also involved in a uh, national um, campaign. It's against, it's uh, stop violence against women. So Islamic Council of Norway is sitting in that uh, working body at a national level. So as you see, we don't only work with prayer times and halal food, we work with many other things. Um, and uh, on the left down, it's uh, a cartoon case from 2006, uh, where the Islamic Council of Norway made a delegation with the Norwegian officials, and we traveled to Middle East. We told them actually that the cartoons were made, made by Danish. So, so, so it went very, you know, the Norwegians didn't have to worry, the Norwegian embassies didn't have to worry. So, but it's not our fault that people attacked the Danish embassies, but we had to clarify that. But I mean, the, 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 the case was, uh, or the philosophy thought behind that was to meet uh, scholars so they could speak with people through mosques, uh, and just to calm down. And in 2006, uh, the Norwegian authorities recognized that the Islamic Council of Norway is a very important platform. Because they, they saw that we are not working only with halal food or prayer times. That's the picture which people often get. This picture, uh, you, go down to Shlali, sir. Is it possible to yeah. take the light off? Can we? All right, all right. Uh, maybe you can't see the picture. Uh, the Prime Minister of Norway met our youth uh, last year. So we organized a meeting uh, and she came and she met our youth. And those who you, maybe you can see or you can't see, uh, they are youth born and grown up in Norway. They are third generation Muslims. And they were telling about the challenges they meet in Norway because they're Muslims. Uh, one of them is, um, is, uh, is pilot, but he, he cannot get a job. His first name is Mohammed. There's uh, a girl sitting here. She was uh, becoming a lawyer. Oh. OK. Here's a culture minister. Here are we meeting with the police. Here is our interfaith dialogue. And she got the Islam in the faith. Oh my God! Okay, okay. <laughs> Time runs away. Uh, interfaith dialogue. Uh, in this interfaith dialogue, we also uh, write joint statements. This statement with the Norwegian Church, between Norwegian Church and the Islamic Council of Norway, was written uh, in 2011. And it was uh, to oppose religious extremism. We have also other uh, statements, which those of you who want, I can give you. Here is a seminar we had with the uh, city church mission uh, two weeks ago about extremism. So it's the interfaith dialogue. We are also invited to participate in uh, international conferences. Here you can see. I don't have that much time. I was trying to uh, talk about uh, 
extremism, terrorism, all of you know where that happened? Where is that? Let's check our memory. Oh, here's, we stop here. Why is it that the, all those terrorist attacks in Europe, in Western countries, we recognize at once, but not this? It was Babri Mosque in India, 20 years ago, built in 15th century, demolished by Hindu extremists. We don't hear about this anymore. This is the mosque. This picture, where? Bosnia. And this one? Norway. This happened in 2011. We experienced terrorism. This is the man. Maybe few of you know how he looks like. His name is Anish Bering Breivik. This picture was taken when he was captured at the same time. And he's smiling. He's happy with that. Uh, he has an idea. This is, this is our youth, our Muslim youth in Norway. If I had more time, I could explain about uh, what they are. Two of them are my neighbors, my first neighbors. Uh, so we, we are also dealing with, of course, our Muslim extremists. And we have dialogue with them. We are engaged with di in dialogue. And we have seen good results. Those who say that dialogue doesn't help have to rethink. It helps, but it is difficult. So the Islamic Council of Norway is the only organization which talks with them. Everybody is talking about them, against them. But they're huge, they're born, they're grown up in Norway. They need to talk. Problem is not religion. There are political issues, as few of you have mentioned. Political issues. What's happening in Middle East? Why are we not solving uh, the Palestine case? What's happening in Chechnya, in Kashmir? Have you heard of Kashmir? What's happening in Kashmir? How come that we could create East Timur within a few weeks, but we cannot solve the case of Palestine? Those are the issues, political issues, not religion. Yes, they become religious. How we work, if you give me one more minute, I'll just explain you how we work in, in, in Norway. This is one of our eldest Imams. He's almost 70 years old. He's not trying to become an extremist, but we are engaged with police to give our ulama, our sheikhs, alternative methods to deal with youth. So we take them out of mosque. We have alternative activi activities. Uh, I don't have time to explain wh why he's there, but it's... Here there are three Imams. They are learning to create a bomb. No, no, they're not. <laughs> they're not. They are not. They already know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, those are the, you know, through, 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 through those activities, they, we, we give them some tools, how to meet youth. Uh, it's not only about theology. Here is police against imams, and imams are very good in volleyball. You know, volleyball? Imams are very good. Yeah. So police were surprised. They beat them badly. You can't see that picture. Here's our youth. Uh, women, women are not active. As I told you, the, 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 the majority of the activities are run by uh, you, uh, women. Here is our Shia mosque. Uh, very nice mosque built just two, year, two years back in, uh, in Oslo. They are gonna have a conference, two days conference about extremism. And I'm going to talk in Norwegian there tomorrow, so I have to leave because I'm going to talk with, with the, uh, yeah, uh, two or three other uh, speakers there. Very nice mosque. They are very active. Uh, here we invited Sheikh Ninui from, uh, from uh, USA, and he met uh, our youth, and they had many questions. Here is another speaker. All those activities which I'm showing you had taken place in mosques. Why I'm showing you that? This is our Prime Minister. We had an, a demonstration against ISIS uh, two years back. So all the Imams, all mosques, Prime Minister, all the ministers came out and we protested against, against ISIS. This is in Stavanger. 
This is a conference which he had or organized. This is the last picture. Uh, for our youth from Norway, from all over the Norway, one or two representatives uh, uh, from their organizations, uh, a national youth conference. How to tackle, how to deal with extremism. Uh, okay, this is the time which I had. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Uh, we have a short comment. Uh, question from Sheikh Morshed that we asked to listen carefully what was said to prepare a short question. And that will be in Arabic and then uh, short and then translated by our translators. Besides, I think that this council um, groups uh, uh, some mosques, so is a, uh, a group of mosques, 
but I think that the mosques, uh, the member mosques of this council represent only half or even less than half of uh, the total mosques in uh, Norway. And therefore we cannot say that it is the uh, only representative of uh, Muslims in uh, Norway. Yes, of course, you were right when you said that after your visit to the Middle East, uh, after the cartoon uh, issue and after the boycott of uh, Norwegian products, etc., um, because this visit had a good impact and a good and positive results, the Norwegian government uh, declared that this council was an official representative or an official entity representing uh, Muslims in Norway. Uh, يعني بارزة في المجتمع النرويجي أو على الفضاء العام وفقد أي قيمة له على المستوى الإيديولوجي ولم يصبح نقطة جذب واهتمام للمجتمع النرويجي لكن هذه المجموعات المتطرفة وجدت مجالا خصبا بعد ارتفاع الهجرة إلى النرويج ومقابل الارتفاع في عدد ال المهاجرين إلى النرويج أيضا ارتفاع نسبة البطالة في النرويج هذا أدى إلى إشعال بذرة التطرف والصورة التي أراكم إياها الأخ مهتاب لبريفيك واللي معروف يعني هو سفاح النرويج والذي ينتمي إلى اليمين المسيحي المتطرف والذي قام بمجزرة في العاصمة أوسلو وفي ضواحيها بمجزرتين راح ضحيتها ما يقارب مئة شاب من حزب العمل العمال النرويجي هذا الرجل كان فعل هذه الجريمة ردا على أسلمة أوروبا وعدم رضاه من وجود المسلمين أيضا بالرغم من ما ذكره الأخ مهتاب من أن تواجد المسلمين في النرويج من بداية الستينات لكن أيضا المسلمون أيضا كانت لهم ما يشابه عمل بريدك هذا الأمر كردا ربما على هذه كان لهم رد مشابه لما قام به بريدك وربما أستطيع أن أشير إلى نقطة معينة في النرويج عندنا أمة النبي والمعروفة في النرويج بروفيت أمة وهي جماعة متطرفة لا تقل داعشية عن داعش والتي تمارس داعشيتها في كافة شوارع وأسواق وأزقة النرويج وللأسف لم نرى أي من نتائج هذا الحوار الذي يقوله الأخ مهتاب وربما هذا يكون أيضا تساهلا النقطة الأخيرة وأن أنهي فيه هذه المداخلة اليوم كما هو معروف للأخ مهتاب عندنا مجموعة في النرويج قامت بعد أحداث التحرش الجنسي الذي حصل في ألمانيا هذه المجموعات تنشط في كامل أوروبا ومن ضمنها في النرويج مجموعة أودينس تفعل دوريات راجلة تلبس ألبسة سوداء مقنعي الوجوه بحجة حماية النرويجيين من المسلمين واللاجئين في نفس الوقت أيضا هناك رد آخر من قبل المسلمين وهو مجموعة جند الله وهي مجموعة منبثقة من أمة النبي بروفيت أمة وهي تلبس ألبسة أيضا سوداء مكتوب عليها جند الله لحماية المسلمين من التطرف النرويجي أين هو نتائج عملكم؟ شكرا Extremism was not obvious in uh, Norway and uh, not in the, on the public sphere or uh, anywhere in uh, Norway. However, extremist groups started finding a fertile ground in Norway after the uh, migration. Uh, after migration started to Norway. In fact, this migration and the increase of uh, number of refugees led to an increase in uh, unemployment and therefore to uh, extremism and uh, violence. You showed us the photo of uh, the brick, the guy who is a murderer and who committed uh, genocides in Oslo, uh, 
killing more than 100 uh, people and his murder was a reaction against uh, Islam. But of course there were also other Muslim groups who uh, reacted similarly uh, and did the same as uh, Brick. Uh, there, are, there is a group known as the Prophet uh, Ummah that is also acting uh, like uh, ISIS and even worse than uh, ISIS in, uh, in Norway. So unfortunately, we haven't seen any tangible results uh, of this dialogue you were talking about. Uh, today, uh, there is also, and after what happened in Germany and all the harassment uh, issues that uh, took place in uh, uh, Germany, there is a group of people, uh, Always, we, we always see them in the streets of uh, Norway wearing black and uh, they are very active in uh, Europe and especially in uh, Norway and they um, they are conducting uh, activities uh, and they claim to protect the Norwegian people from Muslims. But we also see another group called the Jundallah, uh, who are also um, a branch of the Prophet uh, Ummah, and who also wear black, uh, black t-shirts where they, uh, it is written, written uh, Jundallah, and they claim to protect Muslims from uh, Norwegian uh, extremists. So uh, where are we from this dialogue that you were talking about? Yes. Uh, first of all, not all the mosques are member of the Islamic Council of Norway. They choose not to be. And also because we don't have enough time or, or, or people whom we can send and invite them to join. But the Islamic Council of Norway is the umbrella organization of Muslims living in Norway. So I didn't say that all the Muslims are united there. But all of them want to be a part of Islamic Council of Norway. This is my experience. But uh, there are very few people working in the Islamic Council of Norway. So this is the first part. Um, uh, result of dialogue. You cannot measure result uh, within short time uh, that all of them are out of this, uh, this uh, circle of extremism. Uh, there are many who are not active in what you call Prophet and Summa. Uh, many of them have left this group. Uh, I gave an, an, a TV interview a few weeks ago and uh, I uh, answered the question that you can actually count people in this group on your two hands. And I know that. And the secret services in Norway uh, agreed with that. They said yes. Those who are in the, this group, Islamic Council of Norway is right. But of course you will have you know, the youngsters who are inspired by them, they walk with them, they eat with them because they don't have maybe any other place to go. But it doesn't mean that that's so hard extremists like them. I could also mention names, but it's not necessary. So the result is that people uh, 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 who were active in this group go, have gone back to job if they can get jobs. They can't always get jobs because pictures, their pictures have been in newspapers. Uh, and, but some of them have managed to, to, to get job, And also uh, some of them are now back on the uh, on, 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 uh, education sector. So they are getting education. Uh, we hope that they will, um, they will, they will uh, reintegrate themselves in the society. And the last comment is that uh, uh, media always wants to show those who say we hate Norway. They will never interview you, Sheikh. I didn't even know that you were in Norway. Because you have very nice, soft, correct approach towards Islam. But if you say today that you hate Norway, you will be on each and every newspaper, first page. So newspapers, media, they only show picture of those who say we hate Norway. We want to have an Islamic state in Oslo, in Norway, in Kristiansand. You have heard those, those debates. But people like you and me, we really struggle to say, well, this is not Islam. You see? So the results are good, and we must be uh, hopeful. And uh, I, I, I see light, light in this tunnel. We have to continue. Thank you. Thank you.